ATHS, the English department. Um, when I first arrived at IIT, I was very impressed with the campus. Campus, it's amazing. They have a lot of outdoor space. The students have a wonderful gym. The buildings are separated, which is nice because students can walk between buildings, take a break during the day, get some fresh air. And I also like how the grade levels are separated. It helps to um, decrease behavior problems. I was surprised to see the level of technology that's been utilized in the classroom. Um, all the cl classrooms are equipped with projectors and cutting edge tools, um, software, um, state of the art facilities, and I was very, very impressed. I myself have been here since the doors have opened in 2005, and uh, when I compare where we are now to where we were, we've made the quantum leaps in almost every area. Our institute is uh, consistently producing the best graduates in the country. Um, uh, IELTS, uh, IC3, uh, MAP, SAT, we really push our students in a lot of areas. Uh, English is the cornerstone of all of that. And I... This institute has made a quantum leap forward in terms of implementing one-to-one e-learning -one e in the classroom. In the Middle East, it stands out as the premier institute in terms of implementing technology in the classroom and has blazed a trail that uh, many other institutes are eager to follow. E-learning and the English classroom. At ATHS, e-learning is integrated into the classroom environment in as organic a manner as possible. And this requires learning how to take various programs, various uh, utilities, online and offline systems, and learning how they will facilitate student learning in a way that is beneficial for students and staff. Um, I remember like before I, before I came here, it was all like books and paper because we didn't have laptops eventually. And, uh, you know, it, it got kind of boring sometimes in class where we all had to do like flip over pages and write and write and write. But now we do everything like on, on our laptops. Having a laptop has made things easier, uh, less notebooks to carry around, uh, more things to have at the same time and uh, references and sources to get from the internet while you're writing or giving a presentation. The new teacher experience. I was very nervous about learning a new curriculum, how I would implement it. However, when I arrived here, I had a lot of support from my lead teacher, my coworkers. Our principal is very supportive. He helps um, not only with management of behavior, issues like that, but also how to teach um, academic expectations. Teaching high school boys can definitely be challenging. They need constant attention and they're very active and energetic. Sometimes it takes um, being one step ahead of them, getting to know them personally, giving them a lot of support, one-on-one -on -one attention. What surprised me about working at IIT was the level my students were at when I arrived. They are speaking English, at least in the social, social environment. Um, they're motivated, they're wonderful, they're easy to work with and very respectful. I teach straight from my laptop. My students upload all of their assignments straight from the computer. Almost all teaching is done online. It's also a great way to be personal with the students. Um, teaching a lot of students, it's hard to sometimes connect with them all the time. I'm a new teacher. Um, I started working at IIT in September this year. I felt from day one that the students and the teachers had a structured support system what surprised me about working at IIT, working with boys. Um, all the students are local Emirati boys, and it's been a privilege. In terms of classroom management, what works well in the classroom is use their prior knowledge, bring it into the situation, share it with the class, with the rest of the class, and uh, utilize technology as much as we can. The tools we use in the classroom. The Mac. There are a number of programs on the Mac that are essential for teaching English skills in the classroom, uh, speaking, reading, listening, and writing. The first of those is Photo Booth. Students can record themselves speaking so their yeah. teachers can assess them on their language ability or content knowledge. More than before. And now the people having motivation for studying and work. My best subject is English because I like to talk with everyone in English. We should change this world. Uh, one step at a time, one sequence at a time, and uh, we should help UAE build a better community. 
With the dictionary application, students have the ability to actually search for the meanings of words for themselves, minimizing the amount of time they might normally disrupt class by asking the teacher to provide a definition. With Firefox, students can take advantage of services like Google Translate for translating between English and Arabic, IET Mail for communicating with staff and students. Then there's Microsoft Word, which forms the core of the English syllabus by being the place where students get most of their reading material and do most of their practical work. The SRC. In terms of uh, communicating effectively and supporting teachers effectively, uh, we developed something called the SRC. Uh, the Shared Resource Center uh, is something that all teachers have connections to. Uh, it's created something that's often referred to as institutional memory, archive materials dating back three years, uh, lessons, lesson plans, support materials, supplementary material, all there. And it's a great resource for teachers. In addition to uh, the institutional memory that we've developed using the SRC, um, it lends itself to strong support and structure in terms of instructional methodologies and it promotes and provides uh, the opportunity for equality of instruction. So teachers across all grade levels, all sections, are drawing from the same center, the same pool of information, and this greatly helps uh, teachers and students alike. One of our most important and by extension most used ways of sharing uh, at the Dubai campus is something that we call the SRC, the Shared Resource Center. I'll show it to you quickly right now. Um, it's a shared filing system that has grown to include so much more than it was originally. It was basically just English before. If you hop into subjects here, I'll give you a quick little tour of how the English department is using it. I have it broken down into four categories. Um, you can see if you hop into quizzes, we have our quizzes for the year all set out. And we have them by term, uh, by cycle. And you open them up and they're all there. Everything's lined up and ready to go throughout the end of a, of a cycle with answer keys. Just a, a sample of how we're using it. Uh, if you go into archive quizzes, we have stuff dating back two years, so you can check and see how things were going. Career education, of course, has projects. Uh, lesson material will be, as you can imagine, all the standard things. If you go into grade 10, for example, many things are in here for teachers to use. We all have access to this. So it's like having the support of your entire team at your fingertips at any given time. Um, another important part is called common resources. A little bit of everything is in here. Um, if you're doing uh, tests or worksheets of any kind and you want to include some clip art, it's here. Any kind of photos are here, um, all designed by topic. Everything's ready to go at your fingertips. Again, having the support of teachers in the room with you when you're all alone, which is part of the one-to-one -one model which applies, of course, to teachers as well. Another common resources, uh, well-used folder is video. If you hop into video, you have all kinds of things that you can use in class. For example, the Discovery Channel. Things that you can look into for connecting real-life activities and events to your lesson plans. Um, also, another thing you can use is the career education file. Well, there's literally dozens of videos that pertain to engineering type jobs. Also there's career preparation videos and how to do interviews and uh, what to say and what to wear. Um, very very useful. It's all there. It's just, just a quick skim of it. But just to show you how we have this set up on our campus um, and I can definitely tell you that the teachers start to uh, get worried when the site goes down or the network goes down a little bit because it's something that we all use a lot it's an incredibly useful tool. Teacher blogs. In terms of uh, communication, uh, what we try to do here is involve as many people as possible. Uh, we have a few mediums, a few platforms that we're using. Um, in terms of students, we have the blogs. The blogs are basically one per grade and they're used to uh, communicate what's going on to the students but also outside. Uh, to parents, to family, and uh, to a whole host of stakeholders so that they can effectively see what's going on inside our 
individual classrooms, sections, and grades. The more effective ways we've established in communicating with our students is through our grade blogs or websites, if you'd like to call them that. Uh, every grade has one, grade 12, grade 11, grade 10, and of course grade 9. Different teachers use them in different ways. Here you can see uh, teachers addressing their individual sections. Um, also, sometimes things are posted as uh, being addressed to the entire populace of a grade. Um, we have a situation like this here. We have a real-world event of what's happening in Japan being connected to learning in the classroom. Projects, uh, campus events, just about everything is posted here on a regular basis. It's also a nice window for parents and family at home to see what's going on with their boys in their grades in English uh, because it's readily available to anyone with an internet connection. Uh, the sidebar here has also become very important. Um, for example, if you have uh, something that you do not want students to lose or at least have the excuse of losing, we have a PBWorks online storage site up to two gigs connected here to the site, to the, to the blogs. And uh, for example, we have an IELTS application form. Again, online storage, so anywhere the students can access this material. Um, if you would like the students to research what they need in the library from the classroom before you get there, uh, we have a link ready to go on the side. It's proved quite useful. Google Docs. Uh, one of our key factors to success is the ability to track student progress over time. Uh, our Google Doc uh, writing submission form has proven invaluable. Uh, it allows teachers to track even right down to the individual student uh, or all the way up into entire grade levels. And uh, it's, a, it's an essential part of how we do things in the English department. Something that's becoming very useful and used quite a lot by our teachers is the writing submission form. Here you have student name, ID, they can pick a section and they can post their text of any kind and any size. But uh, let's get into the details of how to set this up first before we go any further. Now, after your students have submitted their work through the submission form, the view that a teacher gets is entirely different. First of all, you just need to sign up for a Google account. Many of you already have one if you have a YouTube account or a blogger account. It's all interconnected or a Gmail. Um, once you have a Google account, you have access to all these tools down here, one of which is Google Docs. So let's just click on there. And it will take you to the writing submission forms that uh, you have set up. I have several, obviously. Um, we did use the grade 9 writing submission form, so you just click on that. And it'll take you to all the submissions that have been put in. They're all here. Now, how do you find them? I mean, if you track how many we have here, I, I think we have hundreds. I think we have, let's just pull this down here. Yeah, I mean, there's, we're up over 700 submissions. Now, how do you find them? You go here, you click uh, View. You click List View. Once that pops up, it gives you a filtering mechanism. Now, you teach 9.6, click on 9.6. 9.6 comes up. And it can go even further if you want to filter by name or student ID, and you can get down to the single student. This is how we collect information. Um, you can give a window to the curriculum unit for them to see what's going on, what kind of writing is going on. Your principal can see what's going on. Uh, LTs, teachers, it's all there. It's, information is, is always useful. Uh, gauging is always useful. Collecting data is always useful. Really simple way to do all of those important things. Now, last step would be to show you how to set one up, and it's really fast and easy. How do you make a writing submission form for your section, for your grade? Very easy. Go to Google Docs homepage, create new, click, and then click on form. Keeping with the grade theme, how about we put grade 9 up here? And then a little message would be like, you will submit all your writing here. Uh, and then the first thing that we would do following the same template that we were using before would be the name. It's a text type question, so you would leave that and you would make this a required question, which means if they don't submit it, they'll be called back again to submit it. 
and then just duplicate, move down. Next was the uh, ID number. Again, the same text, again required. Next, you would put a place for the student to put his section and maybe guide him with a little word or two down here. And this would be a multiple choice question. And then below that, you would just simply start typing in your sections. This three is enough just to give you the idea. And the very last thing that you would do is you would give them a place to put their work. So you put paragraph and you put again some guidance. Paste your work below. This would be different. This would be a paragraph text. So it gives them the space here. And that's it. You're done. Roll up here and if you'd like you could choose a theme. I'll just choose any one just to give you the idea. And there's your submission form, online and ready to go. Podcasting. One of our more exciting initiatives is the Podcast Initiative. It's a staff and student collaborative effort which has produced hundreds of video and audio podcasts in the past six months. Students gather daily during breaks and after school to produce video and audio podcasts on a wide range of subjects. The students enjoyed a great deal and they found it to be an excellent way to both have fun and practice their English skills. The archive of podcasts can be found online at the ATHS podcast blog. To view or listen, students or staff just click the link and they can watch the videos or listen to the audio online. The podcasts are available for perusing at any time, whether at home or at school, and they are an invaluable resource in the classroom and outside. Online Storage The backbone of our e-learning system is the ability to get files to students when they need them. And for this we use online storage, uh, a variety of free and easy to use online sites that allow us to store material for students for free, which we can link to on our blog. In order to ensure that our students have access to material at home and at school, we need a place to store it online. One place we use is called PBWorks. PBWorks is what you would call a wiki. The thing to note is that it's free, it has two gigabytes of space, and it's easy to use. What we do is we upload the files that we want to host on our blog, and then we link to those files and post the links onto our blogs. Another place we store things online is Google Docs. Google Docs is useful because most of us have a Google account. And recent changes to Google Docs means that you can host movies, audio files, pretty much any type of file up in your own account. So you just upload the file, then you find the link and post that link on the blog. And that's it. Okay, because the fail, uh, the fail students should be had to participate in the zero period. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> they have to participate. Why we don't let them participate? They have the right to participate. Amara, Amara, Amara. They have to participate. They have the right to participate. They have the right to. We have to support them to to pass. Yes. yes thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Are you in your mind about this or not? Excuse me. You do. You want for me to change my mind? Excuse ah. me. Excuse me. I hear you have a problem with zero period. No. No. You don't have a problem. No. Good. No. Good. I did. I did nothing. I want to my mind. What? what am I hearing? 